of a lot of Christians lately. Now, sometimes in some of our churches, hopefully the goal is not to have a lot of Christians there, um, to have a lot of people that maybe aren't necessarily um, in a great relationship with Jesus Christ so that we can help filter that and foster some great things there. But the places I've been finding myself at lately has been in front of a lot of Christians. So I've been doing a lot of conferences. You know, you, you go to a pastor's conference or a church planner's conference and lead worship, and it's just a bunch of really excited Christians coming together. And as a worship leader, if you guys know, all you have to do is like sing the first word of the song, back away, and they sing the rest of it, right? So it's like the easiest job in the world, okay? Uh, so, so go to conferences, lead. And so I just, the more and more I was doing that, the more I just kept thinking, you know what, God, like, I, just, I really feel like there's more, that something I'm supposed to be doing with these people that's a little bit more than this, because this is really easy. Um, and I kept feeling like he kept telling me, Carlos, I want you to disturb and disrupt the career Christian. Not for the sake of just disturbing and disrupting for the sake of that, but for the sake of letting them see Christ fresh again. Because we all understand that when, um, when our lives get out of control and chaos happens and our lives are disturbed, that's when we kind of sprint back to God and we see him fresh again. And so I started thinking to myself, well, how can I do this? How can I disturb and disrupt people that are already infatuated with Jesus Christ? How can I do that? And so I just started praying and I started searching um, and uh, searching the word, just trying to find what it was that I could do to maybe shake their vision of what it means to be a Christian. Um, and so what I would do, there's simple things that I could do. Um, some things that um, are as simple as like changing the worship set. So a lot of you guys have people that have been Christians a long time in your church. They come in and they're, they, they could almost probably tell you the three songs you're going to start with. At least if they name ten, three of those are going to be the ones you guys are going to sing up top, right? So they're going to tell you that. They're going to know that right after that you're going to do announcements. Then maybe one more song, then a sermon, and then a closing song, and you're done. And so what, what ends up happening is after a year or two, these people are sitting in your churches. And without you knowing, they just start getting really calloused. And they start getting this glazed look in their eyes. So what are some ways that you, that, that you could disturb and disrupt them? Small ways that I love to do that is literally just taking the worship set from the front of the service, maybe sticking it at the end of the service. So then what happens? The people that hate the music and come late for the sermon get stuck <laughs> with the music, right? And so they're like, dang it, you know? And so you, you never know. And so, but what ends up happening is they start having to actually think a little bit during a worship service instead of just you know, getting in, buckling their seatbelt, and letting me kind of pull them along, actually allowing them to think a little bit. So that's something simple. Um, another, another time I was in front of a lot of Christians what our, was our Good Friday service last year um, at the church I was on staff at. And um, I said, okay, how can I disturb and disrupt these people? They know what they're coming to a Good Friday service. They know we're going to talk about Christ's death, and then Sunday we're going to talk about his resurrection. How can we really disturb them? Um, so what we did is, as people were walking in, I had a team of photographers with Polaroid cameras taking pictures. They took pictures of every single person, and then we handed it to them and had them sign it. So at the bottom, they signed their little name. And uh, they were smiling, they were in good spirits. And then at the very end of the service, we didn't even tell them what we were going to do. But we brought out this 14-foot cross um, dur during, I think it was Cannons by Phil Wickham was the song that we were singing. And we brought out this 14-foot cross, and on the cross, we had nailed all 2,000 of those Polaroids. To this, to this cross. And suddenly, heaviness and disturbance happened in their life. Actually, there were some people really offended that that happened. But, you know, at, I probably got about 10 emails that week, you know, and my response obviously was, well, I mean, this is actually what happened, though. He took our sins and he placed it upon himself. And so that was very disturbing for them. So you've got, you've got different spectrums. You've got, let's change the worship set. Or you've got, let's really disturb, and let's, let's take something that's been um, so easy for them to see, and let's make it very difficult for them to see. Um, so those are, some, those are some small ways and some maybe big ways that disturbance can happen, maybe in your local church. And I would ask you guys, um, and don't be bashful here, what are some ways that maybe you guys have disturbed and disrupted some career Christians in your local congregations and in your churches? What are some ways that you guys have actually um, changed things up to where, again, they see Christ fresh again? Because maybe it was something tiny, or maybe it could have been something big. Go ahead and raise your hand, and I'll call on you. And I'll wait an hour until somebody raises their hand. <laughs> yes, right here. What's your name? Todd. Todd. We did some tag team preaching. There you go. Nice. Different pastors in our church, and we just kind of shared 
and we scattered it out between the songs, like five, ten minutes and things like awesome. that. Awesome. So that's great. So you actually, instead of one person delivering a message for 30 minutes, spread, or an hour, however long, yeah, yeah they're feeling, <laughs> um, spread that thing out between yeah. the songs. Now, did you did you connect the songs yeah, with the... Yeah, we connected the songs and the three points, or the three concepts of the sermon to build, but each person had a different role. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thanks, Todd. That's cool. And what else? Yes, right here. What's your name? Tony. Tony. Uh, we, uh, during worship, we study between songs, we, we have uh, words. That changed up the menu. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Anyone else? All right. I heard the yeah. suggestion. Some guy said that they took the words off the screens one time. That's great. So that people would quit just reading them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have to actually think about what they're, they're saying. Because, you know, it is. It's like, oh, yeah, let me think about what I'm saying. Yeah. So just like, that's good. Yeah, so over here, what's your name? Mario. Mario. I haven't tried to tell you. There you go. So kind of that's cool. Back into the yeah. Go figure. That's singing the songs. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Very cool. That's great.